in a state so beautiful that the stars came down from heaven for a closer look. Mrs. Alaska. Hi, from the last frontier, as we celebrate with a little help from the Northern Lights, our 25th anniversary of statehood. Mrs. Arizona. Hello from the Arizona Copper Mining Association. Mrs. Arkansas. Greetings from the home of the University of Arkansas Razorbacks. Mrs. California. Greetings from the Golden State, site of the 1984 Olympic Games. Mrs. Colorado. Greetings. I represent Baby Doe Tabor, Silver Queen of the West. Mrs. Connecticut. Hello from your colonial Yankee Doodle Dandy. Mrs. Delaware. Hello, I'm from the Small Wonder State. I'm Wonder Woman. Mrs. Florida. Hey, y'all. I'm proud to bring you greetings from the space capital of our nation. Mrs. Georgia. Welcome. I'm Georgia's state flower, the Cherokee Rose. Mrs. Hawaii. Celebrating our Silver Jubilee, 25 years of statehood, a lifetime of aloha. Mrs. Idaho. Hello from the low-calorie frozen food industry of the Gem State. Mrs. Illinois. Greetings from the land of Abraham Lincoln. Mrs. Indiana. Hello from the Indianapolis 500. Mrs. Iowa. A great big hello from the beautiful heartland of the United States. Mrs. Kansas. I'm proud to bring you greetings from the Sunflower State. Mrs. Kentucky. Hi, from the Federal Gold Reserves at Fort Knox. Mrs. Louisiana. Hi, from Rivers of the World, theme of the 1984 World Exposition. Mrs. Maine. Greetings from the Maine State Fishermen. Mrs. Maryland. Greetings from the home of the world champion, Baltimore Orioles. Mrs. Massachusetts. Greetings from the home of Paul Revere. Mrs. Michigan. Ahoy from the nine million people in the Great Lakes State. Mrs. Minnesota. A warm hello from the beautiful Scandinavian state. Mrs. Mississippi. Hello from the Magnolia State, where we're known for our southern hospitality. Mrs. Missouri. A friendly hello from the Shoney State, where the beautiful dogwoods are now in bloom. Mrs. Montana. Sacagawea guided the Lewis and Clark expedition through the Big Sky Country. Mrs. Nebraska. Greetings from scenic, beautiful Nebraska land. Mrs. Nevada. Hello from the Silver Dollar Queen of the Comstock Load. Mrs. New Hampshire. Hello from the beautiful Granite State. I give you our state bird, the Purple Finch. Mrs. New Jersey. Greetings from the Jersey shoreline of the beautiful Garden State. Mrs. New Mexico. Buenos dias from the land of enchantment, where we spice it up with red hot chili. This is New York. A hearty welcome from the Empire State. New York loves you. This is North Carolina. Greetings from Lady Neptune, representing the seafood capital of the world. This is North Dakota. Greetings from the land of ice and snow. This is Ohio. Hello from the Buckeye State. I bring you our state bird, the Cardinal. This is Oklahoma. I'm proud to bring you greetings from Oklahoma, land of the red man. This is Oregon. Greetings from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. This is Pennsylvania. Welcome. You've got a friend in Pennsylvania, the home of Betsy Ross. This is Rhode Island. Greetings from the Ocean State. This is South Carolina. A salute to you from the state where Francis Marion led the Confederate soldiers. This is South Dakota. Hi, from the beautiful Black Hills and the home of the pheasant. This is Tennessee. Hello from the Volunteer State, where springtime is enhanced by our state flower, the iris. This is Texas. Hello from Dallas, home of the Cowboys. This is Utah. Hello from the 1890s, when Utah first became a state. This is Vermont. Hello from Ethan Allen. I led the Green Mountain Boys. This is Virginia. Ahoy from the home of one of the largest naval installations in the world. This is Washington. Greetings from the state with many outdoor activities, the Evergreen State. This is West Virginia. Hello from almost heaven, the coal and energy state. This is Wisconsin. Yakshimash from the Dairy State, home of the Great Northern Tribes. This is Wyoming. Howdy from the Cowboy State.
Ladies and gentlemen, there they are in their state costumes. Our 50 married contestants from all across the United States, one of whom is about to be crowned Mrs. America of 1984. Right. You're beautiful. You know, Richard, speaking of winners, we do have three special competitions to get the judging underway. While they do not affect the outcome of the pageant, they are important awards indeed. They certainly are. Now, the first award goes to the Mrs. America uh, contestant with the most beautiful hair. Right. And is presented by, well, I mean, who else? Clairol. You, Clairol. Weren't you a Miss Clairol? Of course. In Mexico for two years. I love that. Go north, young lady. Go north. <laughs> the winner, the Clairol Award, Miss South Carolina Greer Haynes. Congratulations. I like that hair. Well done. Pretty, pretty. pretty. They're all smart. Well, all our ladies are as pretty as a picture, and our second award is for Mrs. Photogenic. And the winner is Mrs. Rhode Island Ruth Gable. And from dresses to dresses, our third special competition is the, for the best state costume. And the winner is... Mrs. Georgia Kathleen Magnuson. Oh, congratulations. That is beautiful. Now, well, you've won Casio's uh, radio cassette player and recorder. It's got a built-in keyboard and a recording studio. Well, right now, all the ladies are going to take off their beautiful costumes. Yeah, well, the bad news is... <laughs> no, no, don't get excited. The bad news is they're going to do that while we're away. Now, the good news is they're coming back in their swimsuits. Well, we're in Reno, right? It's the home of aces and kings. We're going to crown a brand new queen. So... Did you ever get a feeling that something was going on behind your back? That sweet mother of pearl. It's a chorus girl centipede. That picture is worth a thousand words. Beautiful. How about those swimsuits, huh? Where's my mother? Mother, bring me the Fritos. I may be taking a little dip. Everybody knows that the ladies are in their official swimwear by Sandcastle coordinated with Grenda's shoes. Of course, when Grenda finds out about it, she's gonna be very upset indeed. <laughs> it's been a long, long walk in those shoes for these 50 ladies. First, they all won their state pageants. Then they were flown here to Reno for pageant week, where they competed in 
both bathing suit or swimsuit and then evening gown competition. Then they were judged on personality, intelligence, poison, and of course, beauty. And tonight, for 10 very, very lucky ladies, that competition will go on. As we announce the names of our 10 semifinalists. Right now, we turn to our exalted keeper of the sealed envelope, Gentlemen from the accounting firm of Fox and Company, and any person who keeps company with a fox should be a <laughs> public accountant, Mr. Richard Gilman. Richard, nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. We have here, in no particular order, the names of ten semi-finals. This happened last year and is happening now. Truly. I get butterflies and I'm not even in the running. <laughs> Good luck to all of you, my darlings. Here we go. The ten semi-finalists are number one, Mrs. Number two, Mrs. Colorado. The third semi-finalist is Mrs. South Number four, Mrs. Illinois. <laughs> yes, indeed, you are beautiful. Semi-finalist, number five is... Semifinalists, Mrs. West Virginia. You got it. It's a long walk, but you're looking good. Congratulations. The seventh semifinalist is Mrs. Number eight, just three left. The eighth semi-finalist is Mrs. Montana. <laughs> you even look pretty when you cry, Angel. Number nine, the ninth semifinalist, Mrs. Ohio. <laughs> and the last, the last semifinalist. And I look at all your beautiful faces, all filled with hope there, and I'm just going to read it out tell you that I love you all. Number 10 is Mrs. Alabama. Absolutely. But well, I'll tell you, don't go away now. One of these ladies is on her way to the title. Mrs. America, 1984.
us before this night is over, one of these 10 semifinalists will become the new Mrs. America. The 1984 Mrs. America pageant will return after these messages. There's nothing more exciting in the Mrs. America pageant than the next few minutes. You be the judge as we present our semi-finalists in the swimsuit competition. You're gonna love it. Mrs. California. I would like to be Mrs. America because after 28 years of a stable and successful marriage, I would have the opportunity to share my advice with the young women of America on the importance and benefits of marriage stability and the close family unit. Mrs. Colorado. I would like to be Mrs. America because I feel that I exemplify what a married woman should be both physically and mentally. I represent an institution that has helped make our country so strong. I would be proud to represent the greatest country on the face of this earth. Mrs. South Carolina. I would like to be Mrs. America because the title would be a perfect vehicle to touch the lives of other women, just like all of us, in a positive way by helping them to realize that just because they have a Mrs. in front of their name, they can still maximize their potential and be their best. Mrs. Illinois. I would like to be Mrs. America because I feel marriage is a truly wonderful, rewarding, and growing institution. I welcome the opportunity to represent the married women of our great country. As their spokeswoman, I would approach my responsibilities with great enthusiasm and total dedication. Mrs. Hawaii. I would like to be Mrs. America because it would be an honor to bring forth to America and people around the world the optimism, patriotism, sense of duty, and proud spirit of freedom living in the hearts of American families. Mrs. West Virginia. I would like to be Mrs. America because I believe in the Mrs. America ideal. We can have it all, a happy marriage, children and home, and continued personal progress and fulfillment. If our priorities are firmly established. Mine are God, home, country. We must uphold these. Mrs. Oregon. I would like to be Mrs. America because I want to nurture within today's woman the desire to fulfill her greatest hopes and dreams, whether that be in her education or in her career or her home. Remember, miracles do come true. Mrs. Montana. I would like to be Mrs. America because I feel a responsibility to develop and share my God-given talents for the benefit of my family and me, as well as my country. This opportunity helps me to fulfill that responsibility. Mrs. Ohio. I would like to be Mrs. America because I know I could do an outstanding job representing America's married women who can juggle a complex lifestyle yet remain attractive, interesting, and maintain a positive, meaningful, and lasting relationship with their husbands. Mrs. Alabama. I would like to be Mrs. America because I have dreamed of this for five years, working hard and persevering. I believe in what this pageant stands for, and I feel I have the attributes to represent our nation's married women with high standards. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have them, our 10 semifinalists for Mrs. America 1984. Thank you. They are beautiful. This year, it's my pleasure to introduce you to many, many special ladies. But right now, with the Oscar-winning hit song from the film, An Officer and a Gentleman, a special lady of note, she's dedicating the song to the husbands. Some are officers, and all of them are gentlemen. The wonderful Miss Vicki Carr. <laughs>
you guys. I'm very proud of you guys. Now one they of were you, fantastic. Now one of them forgot a line. <laughs> just great. But you some you really are something special. Guys won't, you know, they just won't go around like crazy about one. I'm gonna you don't believe me, huh? Oh, I I'm believe gonna, you. I'm gonna explain something. You're gonna explain it? Okay. You, you say to any of these guys right now, who is the most beautiful woman here in the well, You want them. me to you well, gonna we'll ask them? Okay, you ask them then. Guys, who is the most beautiful woman here tonight? Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> good answer. That's right. how you was a good That's answer. Right. And we've got some real good answers coming up from the ladies. When we come back, we're going to find out just what the survey says. I love it. I can never get away with it.
ten semifinalists are off stage, changing into their evening gowns. Here on stage, Richard Dawson. Once again, our state winners from across the country. And don't they look it in their lucky winter blouses and Sugar Creek jeans. You look great, ladies. Beautiful. Now, prior to the pageant, we polled our 50 contestants on a number of issues and questions, and the results, for me at least, were quite fascinating. I got, here's the answers in the polling, gonna go up here. Now, for instance, like we said to the ladies, who's your favorite primetime television star? Naturally, most of them say Tom Selleck. Favorite primetime TV show? Dynasty, is that, really? Favorite all-time movie? Gone with the Wind. Did you say that? I did. You like that? Very much. Did you see Gone with the Wind? Yes, I did. Well, you know the ending. The butler did it. <laughs> he did? Just joshing. Said to the ladies, how long had you been seeing your husband before he proposed? And it was a tie for the most popular answer. Four months and six months. Now that, I mean, proposed marriage, is that true? Three months for me. Love at first sight. <laughs> if we could bottle that, we could get every defector from Russia to talk. <laughs> Three months and he proposed? How long have you been married? Eleven and a half years. Wonderful years. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, here's a nice question. Now, this is the sort of question I normally wouldn't ask. He said, we asked, other than the bedroom, what's the most... Yeah. Uh, who, who wrote this question? Bob Eubanks? <laughs> Other than the bedroom, what's the most popular room in the house for romance? Number one answer was living room. You call that living? You bet. <laughs> of course, you've got 11 and a half years of sickening happiness. <laughs> you see what the second, by a three to one margin, what, what room is the second most popular? The bathroom. Was that one of yours? Was it? I kind of like it, though, yeah. One lady says here, a cool basement. <laughs> this way, if you're hiding from a tornado, it's not a total loss. You know. <laughs> now, here, said, if you had to economize, what would be the easiest cut in the family budget? Number one answer, clothes. I'm all for nudism in the right place. One lady said, Dog food. <laughs> that was Mrs. Lauren Green. I thought that was her. <laughs> What'd be easiest for you to cut if you had to economize? Kind of We'd probably quit eating out so much. Do you eat out a lot? Quite a bit. Is it because you're not a good cook or he's not a good cook? Or you just like to eat out? He's Italian. He likes his meals. <laughs> I'm now American. I like my meals. <laughs> See, all these people like the meals, darling. Otherwise, as the Italians say, el morte. <laughs> now, here, this is kind of... Have you ever known a better kisser than your husband? Forty-four women said no. Six women said yes. What did you say? Definitely no. Excuse me just a second. I might have changed my mind. Oh! <laughs> I love you, Miss Mary. Yeah, because of those six women that said yes, it means that every one of you is going to be asked that question one more time by your husband. <laughs> he said to the ladies, Tom Selleck, I can understand that. You know, that's a magic that happens every now and again. Dynasty, well, if you like but gone with the wind. That, that really is the great love story of all time, isn't it? Tell the truth. Yes or no? Well, frankly, ladies, I don't give a darn. <laughs> there is one more question, though, that wasn't on our survey. Ladies, have you seen much of your husbands this week? No! That's the truth. They really don't see too much of their husbands during pageant week. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Our ten semi-finalists in the evening gown competition.
Mrs. California, Bonnie Lipke, is 50 years old and married 28 years. A record for this year's pageant. A housewife and interior decorator, she has five children and two grandchildren. In her leisure time, she enjoys a good game of golf and camping with her family. Mrs. California. Mrs. Colorado, Sandra Weedmeyer, is 41 years old and the mother of five. She's still active in the amateur community theater she helped organize. And one of her hobbies is preparing natural food recipes. Mrs. Colorado. <laughs> Mrs. South Carolina, Greer Haynes, is 38 years old and the mother of three. A commercial interior designer, she enjoys skiing and windsurfing and is a gourmet cook. She also teaches self-defense to women's groups. Mrs. South Carolina. <laughs> Mrs. Illinois, Joanne Vittorio, is 27 years old and the mother of two. She is a preschool director at her family church and enjoys snow skiing, dancing, and power speedboating. Mrs. Illinois. Mrs. Hawaii, Eva Marie Padine is 28 years old and the first military officer to hold her state title. Born on Christmas Eve and married on the 4th of July. She's a jogger, swimmer, and surfer. Mrs. Hawaii. <laughs> Mrs. West Virginia, Deborah Wolf, is 27 years old and the mother of three. She's an emergency medical technician who met her husband answering an ambulance call for a traffic accident. They've been cracking each other up ever since. Mrs. West Virginia. <laughs> Mrs. Oregon, Vicki Jenkins, is 39 years old and the mother of six. She's a part-time travel agent and Sunday school teacher. Her husband is a superintendent of schools who once made her his first budget cut. Mrs. Oregon. Mrs. Montana, Brenda Williams, is 31 years old and the mother of three. She owns a florist shop and a company that sells bouquets of balloons. She's an active sportswoman and an amateur singer and dancer. Mrs. Montana. <laughs> Mrs. Ohio, Deborah McDaniel, is 29 years old and a physical education teacher who's also taught driver's education. Her musical talents include the violin and piano. She loves exercise, including tennis and dance. Mrs. Ohio. <laughs> Mrs. Alabama, Katrina White, is 28 years old and the mother of three, a housewife and freelance model. She's working toward a de degree in journalism and works out five times a week as a weightlifter. Mrs. Alabama. Anytime you want to come home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in their lovely evening gowns, our sensational 10 semi finalists. You are gorgeous. <laughs> now it's time to get to know the semi finalists just a little better. We begin by asking a question to Mrs. Ohio. You look like Miss California to me, dear. Woman who's not quite sure what state she's from. But you're Miss Ohio, aren't you? Now, how long have you been married, and what does uh, your husband do? I've been married seven wonderful years, and my husband, Michael, is an industrial consultant. Okay. Now, the single most important element in your marriage was what you called in an interview respectful friendship. Explain that for me, can you? My husband and I started off our relationship right at the first, being best of friends. And we enjoy each other's company. We can laugh with each other. We still remain polite and say please and thank you and all those things that very good friends should always do. I think you got a secret recipe. Thank you. Really, that's a very nice. Thank you, guys. Mrs. Oregon. Vicki, your husband is Jim, right? Correct. I did a little research. How long have you been married, and uh, what does your husband do? 
We've been married almost four years, and Jim is the superintendent of schools in our local school district. Now, so traveling to East Berlin opened your eyes. What do you think would be the problems of marriage in a country without freedom as we know it? I think that the problems of um, marriage in a country without freedom as we know it would probably be quite mind-boggling. When we were in East Berlin, even though we were only there for a day, the fact that we did not have freedom at all in any of the decisions that were given to us was a heavy weight that all of us could feel. And I think to live a marriage in that type of a country and not know whether you were coming or going and exactly how your life would be would not add one centimeter to your marriage. I would not care for it one bit. You don't have to care for it. You're in the best country in the world. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome, Mrs. Hawaii. Mahalo. They love it if you say a few words in their own language. Uh, Eva Marie, I know you're married to Bill. How long have you been married, and what does Bill do? Almost three years, and Bill's a lieutenant junior grade stationed on board USS Jason in Pearl Harbor. Well, now, I understand that you're both, you and your husband, are lieutenants, right, in the U.S. Navy? In fact, that you outrank him by one week, it says. Is that correct? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, now, how do you handle the months of separations that you can have if you're in the Navy? How do you handle that? It's very difficult at first. One has to learn to be self-sufficient on their own again. Uh, one misses their loved one very dearly. Uh, letters sometimes come very late and far and few between. Uh, but you have to stick to your guns and you know that he's coming home again and that's what it's all about. I've suddenly got a new respect for the Navy. Thank you. Thank you, guys. From before, Miss South Carolina. And here it comes. I see you a lot around here, don't I? It's Greer, right? Right. John is the husband? That's right. How long have you been married, and what does John do? Uh, three and a half years, and John is a medical student. Ah, I see the question here. It says, uh, as a wife of a medical student studying, studying in Grenada, you and your family survived six days of shelling and hiding. Said it gave you new appreciation of many things. Obviously, it would, but... In what way? I think being born an American is like being born into a rich family. You have everything. And sometimes you don't know it until it's all taken away from you. And uh, it just gives you a brand new appreciation for life itself and just for being an American, which I'm so grateful for. Well, I'm one, too. I'm grateful for it as well. You're gorgeous. Thank you. And here's the lady that really wanted to come up when I said Ohio. You can't mistake Mrs. California. Bonnie, right? That's right. Married to Ron? That's right. For how long? 28 marvelous years. You are too much. What, is, uh, what does Ron do apart from smile a great deal? Ron is president of American Machinery and Engineering Corporation. Okay. I said the youngest of your children leaves for college this year. How are you going to plan to use your new freedom? Well, after 28 years of success as a wife, mother, homemaker, and career woman, I would like to dedicate some time now to writing a book and to lecturing the young women of America today on the importance and benefits of marriage stability and the close family unit, which I feel to be the backbone of our society. Thank you, my love. Five very, very special young ladies. And we'll meet the other five next. One of them is going to become Mrs. America. They're very good, the oh, yes. The 1984 Mrs. America pageant will continue after these messages. We begin with Mrs. Colorado. Come on over here, please. Sandra. Ron, is that correct? That's correct. How long have you been married? We have been married 17 wonderful years. What does he do? My husband owns a real estate and investment firm in Pagosa Springs. Okay, now the question here is, you're a newspaper reporter in your home state, and you're very proud of your positive attitude. How do you find that that helps you? My positive attitude helps me in my newspaper reporting because I look for only positive and the people I am interviewing, 
I do, do not care for the negative side of press. We were only talking about that to Mary Murphy the other day of TV Guy. Thank you. You can interview me anytime. You're gorgeous. Thank you. Yes, come along. This is Illinois. Here she comes. Joanne and Joseph is the husband, right? That's correct. How long have you been married to Joseph? It's six years in July. What does Joseph do? He's the president of Illinois Diversified Metals. Some kind of nice jobs. Now, I said during a bad storm, you and your husband faced near tragedy at sea. Made you feel very close to death. How did that experience together affect your marriage? Oh, goodness. Uh, that was uh, quite a tremendous experience. Uh, my husband and I have learned not to uh, take life for granted because of that experience. We, we want to enjoy things together and, and just hope that uh, life can go on and we won't have any problems. When you consider the alternative, I think you're on a very good roll there. Okay? I love you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad you survived it, Don. Here in Miss West Virginia. And that's Deborah, right? Deborah. And what's your husband's name? Kim. With an M. With an M, right? How long have you been married to him? Four years next month. What does Kim do? He's a police officer. If you think I'm going for laughs, you're crazy. <laughs> I said you delivered your three-year-old daughter at home with the help of your husband. What do you feel that this experience contributed to your marriage? Oh, my, it, it bonded us together so much as a family because, uh, you know, we, we work together during those few hours uh, more closely than we have throughout our relationship. So I think we made it through that. We'll survive anything. <laughs> if Pizza Man delivers, I think you got him beat. Thank you. <laughs> nice hands, but he's pretty good. This is Mrs. Montana, I'm looking for you. Here comes the smile of the year, right here. Brenda, welcome. Are you married to Wayne? Is that correct? Well, it's John Wayne, but he asked to be called Wayne. You, just like Wayne, yeah. okay. Well, you can call me John. Okay. This way we'll mention both of his names. Yeah. How long have you been married? 13 years. And what does he do? He's a driver supervisor for a trucking firm in Montana. I said, you're a performer, you're a mother, a wife, and you own and operate two businesses. How do you make certain you find time for your marriage? Well, it gets kind of hard sometimes. Most of the time, my husband comes down and makes sure the books are running right. <laughs> and uh, if there's a good break and it's quiet, he sneaks me off. And he's, he's good about that. Seems to be working. You look happy. Fine. I am happy. Thank you. Say hi to Wayne or John. Thank you. This is Alabama, Katrina. He's married to Noah, right? That's correct. What does Noah do? We own and operate a 24-track recording studio. And how long have you been married to Noah? Almost 11 years. Okay, now here's your question. It says, after, oh, after nine and a half years of marriage and no children, in the last year, you and your husband became parents three times over in the last year. How has this changed your marriage? Well, actually, I make a correction. We were married six years, and then we adopted three children in less than a year's time. All of our children were special needs. Um, our two girls were older children, and then 11 months later, we adopted a child from South America who is a malnutrition child. I've got to tell you something, that very, very soon, as they grow up, you've got a whole lot of love coming your way. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Let's hear it. Let's I thank each and every one of you, truly. It's not easy talking to a yoga like me, and you made it very special. You've seen our contestants in their evening gowns, judged in both beauty and poise, and speaking with couldn't be any closer now. It's time to reveal the names of our five finalists for the title of Mrs. America. Right now, I'm pleased to announce for the very first time that not only will one of the ladies reign as Mrs. America of 1984, but she will go on to represent our country later this year in Mrs. of the World pageant at the luxurious Hilton Hawaiian Village and at the Turtle Bay Hilton on the gorgeous island of Oahu. You're going to love that. You're going to love that. The moment has come to reveal the five finalists for the title of Mrs. America. 1984 and 
Richard, may I have the envelope, please, sir? Thank you. Remember now, the names are in no particular order. And also remember, you're all winners, all right? Here we go. The five finalists for the crown of Mrs. America 1984 are finalist number one, Mrs. California. We <laughs> didn't write that book yet, Don. Our second finalist is Mrs. Five finalists is Mrs. Montana. <laughs> Two finalists remain. Six pretty ladies are there. Finalist number four is. Mrs. Oregon. And the last, the fifth finalist, the 1984 title of Mrs. America is Mrs. Congratulations, congratulations, finalists. Now, there is a tradition at the Mrs. America pageant that our five finalists are serenaded. Tonight, that honor belongs to a real star and a headliner here in Nevada and around the country. Singing hits he made famous while you and your husbands were courting. Ladies and gentlemen, and beautiful finalists, the fabulous, the exciting, Mr. Bobby Benton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Richard. You're doing a wonderful job. Isn't he doing a wonderful job? Richard, very good. You know, I'm, I'm really uh, delighted to be invited back here to be part of the uh, Mrs. America pageant. And, uh, well, I especially look forward to it because I have an opportunity to sing to these five lovely finalists. And uh, as I'm going to do that this evening, girls, I want each of you to think back to what you were doing uh, when these songs were popular. And uh, I bet you have no idea that uh, when you were listening to these songs on the radio, courting your husbands, that uh, one night you would be on television and uh, I would be singing one of these songs to you. And uh, yeah, bet you had no idea that in a few minutes you were about to be announced as Mrs. America of 1984. So one of you will be Mrs. America of 1984 and I'd love to sing a song for you. I'd like to start with you, if I may. Roses are red, my love, the violets are blue. Sugar is sweet, my love, but not as sweet. Were her eyes whoa, whoa, whoa. warmer 
than men Her tender sighs Love was ours And I still can see Blue velvet through my tears Please love me forever Don't forget me ever Stop loving me Every day of my life I'll be in love with you And if I have my way That's where you'll always be Every moment I leave, every day of my life. Mr. Bobby Vinton, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby Vinton. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, the final judging is coming up, and uh, don't you miss it. Kind of special, wasn't it? Blue Thunder Walking. The 1984 Mrs. America pageant will return after these messages. Here on the stage, we have five lovely finalists to prove it. That's right, Richard, and here in the audience, we have the husbands of those five finalists. One of you is about to have a very, very royal wife. So I'd like to kind of introduce you to, to our public that's viewing this evening. First of all, you are Ron, right? Yes. And you're married to Bonnie, Mrs. California. Now, Ron, if your wife is crowned Mrs. America 1984, what is the first thing you'll want to do for her? Well, I'll probably, won't, probably want to take her back home and just let her rest up for a couple of days. She's had a very, very hectic week. Well, I think that's very nice of him. Then what are you going to do? Well, I'll probably take her to Florida for a week, possibly, if we have time. All right. <laughs> Did you know about this, Mrs. California? <laughs> okay, Bill, you are married to Mrs. Hawaii, right? Yeah. Well, of course it is. You wouldn't be here otherwise. Now, in, in the last five minutes since your wife became a finalist, what is your most overwhelming thought? I think the most overwhelming thing is that I was... I'm curious how much training she's going to have to be doing to get set for Mrs. World. Now, husband number three, and you're Wayne, right? Right. And married to Brenda, Mrs. Montana, that smile. I told her earlier, too. It's fantastic. Wayne, how would you compare this moment to your wedding day? Mm. That's enough. <laughs> okay, go what? Now it's... Ah. Um, when we got married, you know, it was, you know, I'm getting married, it's okay, but now it's, I don't know. <laughs> Mrs. Montana will fix that. She's got that smile. Everything will be okay. <laughs> okay, now, husband number four, you are Jim and married to Mrs. Oregon, Vicky up there. Great name. Now, if you could whisper <laughs> advice in your wife's ear right now, what would you tell her? I'd tell her to relax and be confident and look for the vision again of being Miss World and I love her. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. I'm sorry if I'm stepping on your feet here now. Husband number five, you are Kim, right? And it's Deborah, Mrs. West Virginia, right? Right. 
Now, for America's 50 million married men who wonder what it's like to have a finalist for a wife, well, what is it like? Well, it's a very great opportunity, and I just hope that we get to share a little of West Virginia with the rest of the United States. Well, that's a great answer. Great answer. <laughs> okay, Rich. Well, thank you. Gentlemen, I've been kidding you through the show. You're all class act. You're very, very special. Thank you. Now, one of you gentlemen will soon be marrying the Mrs. America 1984. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, our five finalists, one of whom will become Mrs. America of 1984. They're right there. Make them feel at home. Give them a nice round of applause. During the pageant week, all our ladies were told that the five finalists would each answer this one question. The question is, what does being a contemporary married woman mean to me? Moments ago, the ladies drew lots behind stage to determine which order they were going to answer that question. The ladies don't know the order. Our accountant does, and he's giving it to me right here. I'll open it up. You'll all answer, as you know, the same question. It's just going to be terrible if you hear all of your thoughts said by someone who's called out ahead of you. But you're all marvelous. You've gotten this far. The question is, what does being a contemporary married woman mean to you? And I need a Mrs. Hawaii. Come on over here. What does being a contemporary married woman mean to you? To me, being a contemporary married woman means the opportunity to pursue my personal development within the framework of my marriage, but not forgetting that it's not necessary for both husband and wife to pursue the same careers, to both provide income, or to be well known for particular accomplishments, but that it's the constant exchange of love, respect, and acceptance which is essential to a truly triumphant marriage. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very eloquently put. I need Mrs. Montana. What does being a contemporary married woman mean to you, Brenda? To me, it means being a self-made woman and then realizing that maybe one day you can rise to the top of your dream and stay there and be loved by the man who loves you more than anything else in the entire world. Dream on, pretty lady. Thank you. <laughs> Same question. What does being a contemporary married woman mean to you, Mrs. West Virginia? <laughs> Bye -bye. I believe that the contemporary married woman is virtually the hub of society because the family is the nucleus of society and the married woman is the heart of the family and home and she sets the tone of the home which should invite each member of the family including herself to fulfill her great greatest potential so not only does she personally contribute to society but she has a part in the contributions made by her husband and her children so I believe that the contemporary married woman has the broadest sphere of influence in the world. Amen. Thank you. And Mrs. Oregon. Here she comes. What does being a contemporary married woman mean to you, Vicki? To me, it means taking the abilities and the talents that God has given to me and to every other pa person on earth and carrying them out to their fullest extent. You can carry them out in career, or in your education, or with your family and your friends. But God gave each one of us something special. All we have to do is recognize it and reach for the star. The question, what does being a contemporary married woman mean to you? This is California. Here she comes. Bonnie Pell. It means to me a woman who strives to take advantage and make the most of all her God-given talents and capabilities 
and to be able to earn the love, the respect, and the admiration of her husband, her children, and her community. I tell you, if God's going to have a showing, you're going to be an exhibit. Thank you. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. They're beautiful. They're beautiful women. And when we come back, we are going to have a brand new Mrs. America. From Waverly, Tennessee, it's a real pleasure to introduce Mrs. America 1983, Susan Goodman. And Susan! Oh, you look gorgeous. Thank you. Now, Susan, we love you. I know you've been all over the country this year, you've made lots and lots of new friends, and I understand you kissed one of them and left a little lipstick on them. Is that true? That's right. I sure did. Uh, I was just so excited to meet President Reagan, but I want you to know I did ask his permission first, and in case Mrs. Reagan is watching, it was only on the cheek. But seriously, I have had such a rewarding year traveling all over this great nation of ours and meeting so many wonderful people and making so many lovely friends, especially among the misses. And speaking of friends, Richard, my daughter April and I really enjoyed doing your show, The Family Feud. I had the greatest time. I have to tell you that uh, two weeks from now, we start our ninth year on Family Feud. And, no. That's nice, but that's not why I pointed that out. I just wanted to tell you that in the eight years of nighttime and daytime that we've been doing that show with celebrities for charities, nobody ever, ever shut out the opposing team. And like a twerp, on the first day, I said, I, I hosted Mrs. America. On the second day, I said, I'm going to do it again. And they won another game. And on the Wednesday, they gave me a banner that said, Our Mr. America. And they won that game. I went to the dressing room and I said, Please, Lord, I know you're busy. <laughs> but please let Miss America, please, just win one because this will. They went out the fourth game. Bam! The fifth game for $10,000, the Friday. Shut out for the City of Hope. My darlings from the Mrs. America 1983 champion here. $30,000. You make the record. You're a and, and I'm being investigated, of course, by the FCC. It's been a great year for you, Susan. I know that. And as you know, there are many, many marvelous prizes waiting for tonight's winner. Uh, now it's time to announce the winner. The final decision, the non-voting chairman of the judges panel, our host here at the Reno Hilton, and a man who knows about marriage. He's been married for 37 years to his beautiful Marilyn. Ladies and gentlemen, Good friend, Aaron Hilton. Aaron. Thanks, Richard. You know, my wife is your biggest fan, and we're delighted to see you here again. The Hilton family is very proud of Mrs. America and of her presence on our first two entries in the annual Tournament of Roses Parade. In 1983, we won the Governor's Trophy. This year, we won the coveted Grand Marshal's Trophy. With Mrs. America, we feel we can't lose. And once again, the new Mrs. America will be the lucky charm in our Pasadena float in 1985. Thank you very much. And here is the judge's final decision. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. And this is it. And I get butterflies all over again because it all comes down to this moment. I should mention that all the runners-up will receive cash prizes. And obviously, congratulations to each of you. The fourth runner-up at this moment is... Mrs. Runner-up is Mrs. Hawaii! Yeah! Now comes 
second runner up and we see the second runner up is Mrs. So finally, from thousands to 50, to 10, to five, to just two, one of these young ladies will be the first runner up, and the other is Mrs. America, 1984. Now, if for any reason Mrs. America cannot fulfill her obligation to the title during the year, the first runner up will assume that title. Ladies and gentlemen, First runner-up is Mrs. California and Mrs. America from 1984 is West Virginia. special moment. Darling. It was in West Virginia. Deborah Wolf, and this is West Virginia, the 27 years old, the mother of three. A health and beauty consultant. She's been married for three years to her police officer husband. Mrs. America, 1984. Deborah Wolf and husband Kim. What a moment. Congratulations. Ah, oh, congratulations. All right, now, Mrs. America, you've got to get ready for an incredibly full year. It starts tomorrow morning when you fly to New York City for a round of television appearances and you start with the Today Show. You're also going to need something a little chic if you're going to be in New York. Certainly. We want you now to take a look. Here is your black glamour mink coat. From the internationally famous Flemington Fur Company. Oh, that is gorgeous. Now, if you have a mink and you're all dressed up, you'll need some place to go, right? You and your husband, we have a round-trip TWA Ambassador Service tickets to London. Enjoy. And every international jet center needs a little spending money, my darling. So for Mrs. America, it's no exception. Your good housekeeping cash award for $5,000. Congratulations. And finally, Mrs. America, I want to give you really our sincere congratulations. We're all as thrilled as you are. And I have to tell you that downstairs is a very special prize. Made in America for Mrs. America. It's your brand new 1984 Chevrolet Celebrity Station Wagon. Enjoy with love. All right. Let's go right over here. Beautiful, yeah. Hi, Angel. I'll see you in 15 years. After these messages. Mrs. America 1984 is Mrs. Deborah Wolf, 
from West Virginia. She's been married for three years to her husband, Kim, and she tells me, you know, she's never been happier. And I'm happy, too, and I had a wonderful, wonderful time, Richard. Well, I thank you, Vicki. I always have a good time. I want to thank each and every one of you. Gentlemen, your class, your magic. As an audience, you were delightful. And my thanks to 50 of the most beautiful married women in America. Here she is. She's my wonderful co-host, Miss Vicki Carr. I love her. We had a great time here at the Reno Hilton. See you all next year, the 1985 Mrs. America pageant. We love you. The 1984 Mrs. America pageant was brought to you by Clairol. Clairol's going to make someone beautiful today. Why not you? And by improved ladies' choice, solid antiperspirant. It works more beautifully than ever. And by Arm & Hammer Pure Baking Soda. In your bath, Arm & Hammer Baking Soda soothes away summer heat. Travel arrangements for the Mrs. America pageant provided by the only airline with business class on every wide-body flight within the U.S. and to Europe. For big seat comfort, TWA, you're going to like us. If you'd like to be a contestant in the Mrs. America pageant next year, write to us at the Mrs. America pageant, 2001 Wiltshire Boulevard, Santa Monica, California. Zip 90403. This is John Harlan speaking. Barney Miller and the gang at the 12th Precinct came up for lots of laughter and a touch of crime fighting on Saturday night at 8.30 on WPGH-TV 53.